we have a special, special guest in the audience, in the audience, in our studio, as you can see. I'm going to introduce him in a minute. But first, I wanted to tell you that we are in day 10 of our 40-day end-of-year campaign, and we are raising money for the, the Four Corners Project for the year 2021. We've got a lot of stuff on the horizon, stuff stuff that our Chazen, Chazen of Schlock, will be involved with, and um, stuff in Israel, stuff in America. Um, so please, everybody, we've had already, believe it or not, first thing is we say we got a high from our associate producer, Judy Hertzfeld from Passaic, Jersey, is, is uh, piping in. And um, we have had 62,000 views since we started. Mark, isn't that unbelievable? 62,000 yeah. views. We are averaging nice. over 1,057 views per show. I think it's Something unbelievable. to be proud of. Yes, sir. It really is. And today is the 18th day of Kislev, or at least tonight is the 18th day of Kislev. We have um, uh, seven days left or eight days left till Hanukkah starts, which is a week from tomorrow night. Um, and let me introduce the Chazan of Schlock, the one and only, one of the original six Schlock rockers from the history in the Schlock Rock Hall of Fame, Mark Infield. Hey, everybody. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me, Lynn. Yes, it's Lynn. a pleasure to have you. And, you know, we, we are going through, as, as the um, viewers know, we have had Eitan G. He was our first guest. Then we had Gary Wallen, the original drummer. Then we had Ethan Bill, who is a really schlock rock. I would call it schlock rock 3.0. He's the new producer, dr the latest drummer. And uh, a fantastic interview that was. Then we had the Kraz behind the scenes. And then last week we had Mark Skyer, the original bass player. Well, today, the Chazan of Schlock. And how would I introduce him? Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Mark has played on the band. He has played percussion. He has played second keyboard. He has played sax. He has played clarinet. He has played flute, he has played melodica, and he has played drums on the bandstand. Mark Infield, how would I even introduce you? You're the man of seven instruments. You play seven <laughs> instruments. Uh, why don't yeah. we tell everybody out there, how did this happen? How did it be that you, I mean, I play piano, I play accordion, I play harmonica. People say to me, what do you play? I play piano, I play accordion, I play harmonica. You play seven instruments. How did it be... Uh that you, you came to learn seven instruments? Well, I started out on drums, as you know. That was That is and always will be my first instrument. Right. Uh, I started out at a very young age because my dad, Oliver Shalom, was taking drum lessons when I was little. He had always wanted to play. And my mother bought him a set of drums for their anniversary. Uh, and so now I'm two and a half, three years old watching him practice for his lesson and he noticed me being very attentive to what he was doing put me on his lap put a pair of sticks in my hands and the rest is history where that's concerned wow. by, the time I, by the time i was five i was playing along with my beatles albums uh and my parents realized i was being serious about this and my best friend's father was a music teacher and recommended a drum teacher for me and i started taking, I took four years of drum lessons at that point. And also my best friend's father ran a summer music program in Fairlawn High School. And uh, and so I used to go to that program. Instead of camp, I went to that program. So I'll tell you an interesting uh, story, Mark. And that's where, know, that's where I learned the other instruments. I'll tell you, I'll tell you an inter interesting story. You know that you once played uh, for a, a Steve Bill orchestration you, Steve Bill was the conductor, and you were on okay. drums. And he said you were one of the best readers. You were reading. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just playing drums. It's not just playing a beat. There is a theory. There is drum charts. You get drum charts. You have to read the charts on the spot in the middle of a show. Let's say you're playing a Las Vegas show or you're playing a show in Atlantic City. The drummers have charts, that, and, and they're backing up guys like... Uh, I don't know, Donny Osmond in Vegas and all that type of stuff. Um, you 
Steve Bill said you were one of the best drum readers he ever had on his band. And I don't know if he ever told you that. But yeah. um, so not only were you an amazing drummer, but you actually came into the band also as a percussion player. And percussion was was um, uh, was how you joined the band as one of the six original band members, correct? No, actually, I played sax first for part of, for a little bit. You did and play what, sax. And then, that's when Danny joined. I moved over to percussion. Yes. Oh, so that's right, because Danny was the last original six member to join. Correct. That is correct. So now that's, but that's what was great about having you is that, you know, you have on the Yankees, you have DJ LeMayu. He can play first base. He can play second base. He can play third base. On the Mets, you have Jeff McNeil. He can play left field. He can play third base. He can play second base. You were that utility guy. You were the guy that, um, that could play. We could put you in any position and you would excel. And, and you did. And, um, what was amazing, what was amazing was that you also brought something else with you, which was your voice. Because, ladies and gentlemen, not only was Mark playing the seven instruments, but he is the chazan of schlock. And, um, but we're gonna, but I want to, I don't want to jump ahead to that yet. Let's first talk about how you and I met and how you okay. ended up coming onto the bandstand. W when was the first time that we met? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I believe so. We met in, uh, uh, at JC in Elizabeth, New Jersey, you were with Kesher, right? That was that was your first New Jersey appearance, and I right. was there. I was there playing piano and conducting for the opening act. Who was the was, opening act? It was Hazen Shimon Kugel. Yes, yes, I remember him. I remember that, him. That's that's the, what I remember is the first time we met. Now that that's funny because that was 1984, I believe. I do not remember so, what year it was. So we so met I, in 84. I was 23 years old. And Mark, you were you, Mark is a little bit younger than me. Mark yes, is a little bit younger than me. Six months. I think less. I learned that. Well, you're June or May. What's your birthday? I'm, I'm June. You're January. You had right to be like six months. That's right. So I got, I got I got six months on you. So um, that was really amazing. So you, you joined. Yeah. That's how we met. We met backstage before you went on. Kesher was making its debut in Elizabeth. At the right. J, wasn't it the JEC it, high school yeah, or something I, like it, that? Yep, in Elizabeth. Yep. And then, and then you joined the band. You joined the band. I guess it would have been no, but the, but you. So we must have we must have played together. We must have played together. Well, um, you one time, one year, Kesher played New Jersey NCSY Winter Regional. Right. And, and I was there. On, for and you sat in with us. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, uh, played drums on Sunday because Svi had to leave to go to another job. Right, right. Okay, good. So, so you were with us in Kesher, and then, and then we played uh, NCSY National in Chicago. That was the yes, first time. I remember that. That's me and you. You're playing that was drums. The, I'm playing keys. Right, and and oh. then I switched to sax when Feinberg got there. Oh you my remember? gosh! See, ladies and gentlemen, we're 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 really going back because this yeah. is thirty. Yeah. Uh, 36 years ago. Now, and that, I want, and that weekend was when you first broached the idea of schlock rock to me. That's when you started talking to me about it. Because it was it was it was germinating at that time. Even though a Barbie yeah. was written in '82, the first right. schlock album didn't come out until January '86. Now you right. were on that, and Correct. you you made your debut singing the opening to "Bless on It," where you Correct. did the bracha. Right. Give us a couple of bars of that. Yeah. Just the first couple of words. Right. That's it. Bless on it. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. <laughs> Long time ago, yep. That was it. That was your. That was your. But did you also sing harmonies on this on that album? I sang with there was a, a chorus, uh, right? Not not really harmony. We just sang some shtick stuff in the background, right, in the middle of that song, right, right. And then I played uh, the congas on Cotel in the Night. But you ended up being on at least 15 to 20 Schlock Rock Lenny Solomon productions. 
Yeah, I think 20 is closer than Yes, because you sang with Avrami Weisberger, Jonathan Rimberg, right? sometimes Seth Stavsky, but probably more... More, more um, Avrami. I think more uh, Avrami. Avrami and, uh, and, and Jonathan Rimberg, and you right. guys were the, were the backup vocals in the studio. Yes. And you also sang um, Choni Hama'agel yeah. uh, on Purim Torah. Yeah. And I did the Chazana solo before. Uh... Oh, yes. You did the Kol Nidre right. before Michael Jackson's Tefillah, otherwise and known I, as Thriller. And I did the narration at the end. Right, right. And oh. I and I blew Chauffeur in the background at one point. Here, here's yeah, the Purim Torah cover. Yeah, Purim Torah cover. On that recording, I was on every, every song doing something. You really were. And and uh, you really had, had become, at that point, we hadn't even toured yet, you know. No, that album that. came out in March of 87. Our first show, as I always tell the audience, the first shows that we ever did as a band was December 8th and 9th in, or 7th and 8th, Bayonne, New Jersey, and Smithtown, Long Island. And you were That's definitely right. on that bandstand. Yes, I was. And then we that started, is. and then we started to tour. Yes, and uh, and it was really, it was really fabulous. So, so let's let's go go into the concerts. Okay. Tell me, wh what sticks out? What do you have any uh, any memories from the concerts? Was, you know, we did. Yeah, the the one that really sticks out for me that I, that I have very fond memories. Of, I mean, I have fond memories of a lot of them. Most of them, it's not all, but the, the big one is uh, London. London, when we London. played Wembley. Yeah, the convention center, not the stadium. <laughs> well, that's right. The, the, <laughs> the, stadium, the stadium holds uh, 83,000 people or more. <laughs> right, right. The convention center held 3,000. We <laughs> sold out half of it. So in other words, they closed off half. We we had fifteen hundred people the first time Schlockrock ever played London. Right. And it was so much fun. It was such a great wow. show too. Yeah, real real uh, professional concert hall with professional crew. Uh, we act we actually had a whole security team to uh, keep the audience away from the stage if you remember. I do remember that. That's you never know, happened. That that happened to me when we were on playing Hask, you know, I sat, I was on the Hask shows as a backup right. singer for Mordechai Ben David. They made us wear a name tag, and I forgot to take it off. And I'm on stage performing, and I have the name tag sticking off my clothes. Uh, my wife was not impressed. If you know, like, <laughs> she's sitting yeah. in the audience. You, you, you know, you never took your name tag off. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't the only one. Um, Mayor Abitan also didn't take it off, so we all had our name tags. Anyway, so you're right. Okay. Wembley, Wembley was a Wembley was a great show. It was a great. The I mean, crowd was off the wall. They were crazy, in a good way. Of, I'm saying in a good way. Yes, one of the greatest things about Schlock Rock that I that I love is, was that nobody really had seen a band like this before because we were your typical rock band touring the only difference was we all wore yamas and, uh -huh. and we all um we all wore yamakas and we and you know they weren't expecting we, we played rock and roll right yeah coming coming out of the rock coming out of the era where pit om kamadam was yeah. like the big song we took it to the next level all the different rock songs both original and parody. Um, you know what else? What about the trip to Israel when we went to yeah. Israel? That would be another that, big, was your, yep. that was your first time, wasn't it? That was my first time in Israel, yes. So the Schlock Rock touring crew was responsible for Mark Infield coming to Israel for the first time. Yep. And I remember J.J. Uh, Greenberg, Oliver Shalom, made a big deal about that and made sure that I knew all the places we were going to and, and the significance of them and all that, all that kind of stuff. He it's, took very good care of me that week. It's really amazing. It's really amazing. Okay, so believe it or not, Mark, we're halfway through. We've already done 15 okay. minutes. I, I, uh, but I, what I want to do is i got to do some paperwork because if you don't do the paperwork, then afterwards 
you know, somebody might come up to me and say, you, you didn't plug this, you didn't plug that. So let me just tell right. you, we have lots and lots of cons of shows coming up here at the Four Corners Project studio. Also, I will be doing three concerts for three different organizations over Hanukkah, virtual concerts. The first one, this Sunday, this Sunday for the FD Foundation, Familial Dysautonomia. Um, they are a, a tremendous organization. They have a concert called Unified, and I will be one of five performers. Uh, it's from 12 to 2 Eastern and 7 to 9 p.m. in Israel, and do the math for the other areas. So that's the first show. That's this Sunday, December 6th. You can, you can go on my Facebook page. You'll see a link to it, and you'll know where to go, and um, you should come because it, it, it will be really, really fun. Now, I'm also doing on Sunday, December 13th for Chabad uh, of Mineola, the Hanukkah Telethon there. And I'm also doing on the seventh night of Hanukkah, December 16th, I'm performing a virtual concert for the Jewish Federation of South Palm Beach, PJ Library, and the Center for Jewish Engagement. So that's that's the paperwork that we had to do first. And I also wanted to tell everybody um, that um, it's it's very, very important. We have a special now because I'm going to be doing a special concert on December 13th, 2 p.m. New York time. It's a Zoom concert for anybody that gives $100 or more to the Four Corners Project. So already one person has done it. I want everybody to make a $100 donation. You will have a special concert and question and answer session with me, and it'll be, uh, it'll be really fun. Okay, so uh, remember, it's tax deductible. I must say that also. It's a tax deductible donation, and it's really, really important because informal Jewish music education. I mean, Mark, did you realize, you know, you yourself – or a Baal Shuva. You you grew up. You were not Correct. religious in the, in the beginning. You became religious. You were you have been involved with the ultimate Jewish outreach rock band of the eighties and the nineties and and even today. Um, it, did it, did you think about that while you were performing at all, or only in retrospect? No, I wouldn't say in retrospect. I remember uh, it. It became real to me when we were in San Diego the first time. Yeah. If you remember, you and I made an appearance on Friday at the uh, the local day school, and then the concert was on uh, Sunday, if I remember correctly. Right. And while we were at the day school, we watched one of the grades uh, line. They were lined up in the hallway at the sink, washing uh, for Nitila Yadayim for lunch, and they were – using the words from our, from the rap that we did, uh, Wash This Way, to remember the steps. Unbelievable, right? And we, yeah, and we were both uh, blown away because it's the first time we ever saw the real impact that we, we were having on, on people with, with, a, with the, this music. I know, I know. And I also, to this day, I, I get letters three times a day from people. I grew up with your music. My kids are listening now. Keep up mm -hmm. the good work. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. One person just wrote to me today, do a country western schlock rock album. So I said, well, you know, we have to get funding. Funding is really the key. But right. but um, let's let's get back to the music. Okay. I, I, I want to surprise you with something that I didn't, that just popped into my head. So okay. there we were. We were at a show. I think it was Englewood, New Jersey. And you come up to me and you go, Lenny, I was playing this game over Shabbat. And I couldn't believe it. You are in the Trivial Pursuit game. Schlockrock is in the Trivial Pursuit game. Tell tell the story, Mark. Yeah, okay, so for, for the concert, first of all, was in Philadelphia. It was in Philly? It, yeah, and it was a Purim, Purim concert, if I remember correctly. Okay. I, I As you know, and I'm sure many of the listeners know, uh, I work full-time at uh, what we call now Yeshiva Frisch. Uh, uh, That's right. Frisch High School. My right. alma mater, but I've now been here teaching and working for 37 years. Unbelievable. Uh, so one of my students came over to me during that week before the concert and said, Mr. I, you have to see this. And he hands me a card from the newest American, the newest uh, Trivial Pursuit edition that had just come out. It was the, the, uh, the Bicentennial edition. It was 2000. Right. And it was also uh, the All American edition. All American. All American editions, right? No, it wasn't. It was ninety six, I think. 
It wasn't 2000. Right. And uh, he hands me the card. And the entertainment question on the card was about uh, what what Jewish group parodied uh uh, parried a song with the with uh, what type of music did uh, the Jewish group Schlockrock parody with the song uh, Yo Yo Yamaka? Right. Of course, the answer was rap. And then, uh, and then you so come I, on stage, and you, I went and out. I went out and bought the game because I knew you weren't going to believe this, I, and I wanted to be sure. So I went out and bought the game, and I found this, the same piece. So I knew it was real. Right. Went, well, it wasn't my student playing around with me. So I brought it with me to the concert and we're backstage getting ready. And I said, Len, you got to see this. And I handed it to you and, and you read it. You go, this isn't real, right? This is a joke. I said, no, Len, this is the, the real thing. I said to you, how much did you pay to, to, yeah. to pull this one over? And then when, on you re me. when you realized it was real, you're like, oh my God. And you start calling the other guys over to show it to them. Well, it really was an unbelievable thing because if you think about yeah. it, Parker Brothers is a real company, yeah. and Schlockrock made it into the Parker Brothers game. And not only that, we were on the same card with Joe Namath, with the state of Alabama. We've gone with the wind, with, with these, yeah. all these questions. Yeah. And, um, and I said, this is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. and I, call, I actually called up Parker Brothers, and I asked them, yeah, how did you get into your game? Yeah. And they said, either two ways one of the people that write the questions like you or you keep getting on their desk you keep getting in publicity and it keeps getting on their desk and they put you in to the question now i asked of course if they would send me 500 cards of that particular card they said no but you could buy 500 games <laughs> i remember i did not actually buy 500 games but i did no. um i bought that one game i did and I laminated the card, and I still have the card. I it's still have it. It's a big honor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I never would have known about it, except that uh, the Chazan of Schlock, Mark Infield, comes through. Right. So, you know, through the years, Mark, you've been on all uh, most most of our shows, a lot of our shows, you know, uh, you played with us. You went all over the world. Well, you went to Israel. You went to England. Right and the, and the videos, and, oh, and the music videos, including the late, w the last video that you were on was Kosher K, correct? Or That's you right. Sh you weren't That's on Shake right. Hands with Shake Hands with your Uncle Max. You weren't no, on. Right? You no. asked me about it. I wasn't available. You did right. ask me. So yeah. So uh, Kosher Cake, which we filmed in Teaneck, New Jersey, at Butterflake. That's right. Thanks to thanks to Richie yeah. Heisler. I was there the and, other day, and I said hello to Richie. Yeah, oh, uh, that was that was a great day, and nothing, yeah. nothing worse than than sending three guys who have uh, no, uh, food issues to a bakery. <laughs> to <film laughs> yeah, and now Doctor D works there, or at least he was working. Well, there. That's right, Doctor D does work there. Yeah, so shout out to Doctor D. We got to get Doctor D on maybe next week. Yeah. We'll try to get him on next week. Um, I think in two weeks we're going to have Yona Lloyd, but I don't want to say that for sure. Okay, because uh, you know I don't want to. Have to back that out, but we're working on it. Um, and uh, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get Mike Roth. We gotta get Mike Roth on, one of the drummers of the band. Uh, we there are a lot of people that we have to get on. Yeah. So, um, in terms of the the studio and the albums, what what stands out to you? Like, what was the funnest part of singing on the on the Schlock Rock uh, projects? Um. That's a good. I mean, I always enjoyed singing, you know, the background parts. Uh, but uh, uh, some of the comedy shtick that we did was, was yeah. a really a lot of fun. There would be times where we'd all be, because we were just throwing lines out. We would be in in the booth, uh, uh, us yes, or, improv, and, and Mark Skyer and Gary and Danny. We'd be in the booth and just throwing lines out. And every once in a while, there would be a line and. and you would yell, "Cut!" He's like, "Guys, we can't put that line on a recording." Right. <laughs> Everything was just being thrown out. You know. I know. Now you remember when you when you played Mayor Meyer in the Kosher Police? Yes. I had a great time with that recording. I remember I said to you we should have made that an animated. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. We that's money. That if money, fell, a if money fell from the sky. We could have done that. Right. Right. 
But yeah, that, uh, that recording was a lot of fun. And the kosher police should be animated. Absolutely, it should have been an animated series. It should have been a cart, yeah, or even a series, yeah, a cartoon. I mean, every, everybody in it, it was great. The the parts so, were cast perfectly. So it, 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 the parts really were. We had Mo Shapiro play your son, Oscar Mayer Wiener. Right. No, he's just Oscar <laughs> Mayer. Right. Um, but that was what he truly would like to be. Um, right. And and um, Yona played the commissioner. Commissioner of uh, Menschville, right? No, uh, the police chief. The police chief. I was the police chief. Right. I was the mayor. And and then Gary Wallen played the evil the Doctor I M Traif, with Danny and, Block and, being Tsuris, right. the sidekick. Oh, it was it was just as good as a Mel Brooks movie? I must tell you. Yeah, no, we had a good time. So listen, believe it or not, we've got four minutes left. Um, okay. And what I want to do is I want to add you to tell the tell the um, our listeners about the other side of Martinfield, which is that you work at Frisch, but Correct. and and you don't only work at Frisch, you also teach uh, as an EMT. To, um, I'm an EMT you, instructor. Yes. So tell the tell the audience a little about well, what you do and. Um, and, and what do you do at Frisch? Well, at Frisch, I'm uh, partners with the school nurse. We are the medical staff of the school. Um, I have taught music here. I used to direct the choir and the band, but I'm very busy now with the with the EMS part. I also am teaching a 12th grade class, which is called EMR, Emergency Medical Responder, which is a level below EMT. Uh, and I'm also the uh, in-house sound technician here at school. So whenever there are programs, I'm usually the guy at the soundboard. Um, outside Frisch, I work at night at the Burton County EMS Training Center. I'm an EMT instructor. So I teach the I get teach the new generation of EMTs, which by the way includes my son Izzy. He's he's now an EMT and a firefighter. Uh, volunteer both and then he also is a his full-time job is he's a dispatcher uh, also in the EMS world so and we've done many calls together we've treated many patients together and uh, I ride for the he's with the Teaneck Volunteer Ambulance Corps and I'm with Bergenfield I was with Englewood I'm actually still technically a member there. I'm a life member there so you ride uh, you ride the ambulance uh, at all at night, like all night? I, I ride one Saturday night a month where I'm on from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Sunday morning. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's uh, tough stuff. And, then, and in between, if there's a uh, – uh, we have one crew on at any given time. So if, if the second or the third ambulances or both are needed, uh, I will. if I'm around, I will respond for those calls as well. Well, I must say, Mark, that uh, you you are incredibly versatile. You have not only in the music industry where you play seven instruments and maybe even more by now, but um, you also you have the, a totally other facet or you know other side to you, which of course is the health industry, the right. emergency medical, and you're a teacher. You teach. Yes. EMT, you teach people how to be EMTs, and your son actually also does that. You, you know, right. and it's, it's an amazing, amazing tribute. And uh, I just want to uh, say that it's been a pleasure having you. Ta Same I want to tell the audience tomorrow night, show number sixty, back to music. We're going to be doing a music show, and I hope that we're going to get back on the road soon. You know, Mark, it's time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's definitely a rock reunion tour. Here we come. Schlock Rock has got to get back on the road, but before we can get back on the road, there have to be people that can come to shows, and you know, uh, we still have to figure out that social distancing thing. Yeah, which I mean, that reunion show we did in Israel a few years ago was fabulous. That's oh, that was, was amazing. So much fun. Yeah, that was it amazing. Was well, that was for the 30th anniversary, or the I think it was 32nd anniversary. Which, I don't which a lot of which a lot of people when we started out said was never going to happen. You know, I must tell you that that is true. That the <laughs> people, a lot of naysayers when we started out who said it's not going to last long. But you know who was not? Nachum Siegel was not a Nachum Siegel said Lenny Solomon is going to make it. That's what he said. 
I have but, it on tape. I have it on tape for the show in 1985. And he said it on air. And I, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, uh, but anyway, so the scoop is that, um, that it was great having you. And uh, we wish you the best. We want to, we hopefully we'll be back on the road again performing, you know. And we didn't even talk about our Pesachs together, where we always used to go away yeah. Yeah. for like eight Pesachs in a row, me, you, and Shloy, me, Ash, to Palm Springs and to, uh, and to Arizona. We went uh -huh. to a lot of places. Uh, yeah. You know, people say, how do you make a living in Jewish music? And the answer is, if Hashem, if God wants it to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah, God wanted Schlockrock to happen. And... Yeah. Uh, it, it was a great thing. Anyway, listen, guys. It's been great having you. And uh, it's been great having you, Mark. And we will see you tomorrow night, 11 p.m. Israel time, 4 p.m. Uh, New York time, for our show, uh, show number 60 of Lenny Solomon Live. Take care, everybody, and have a great rest of day. Bye, everybody.